Thank you all for coming today. We've got to talk about content. I know you've heard content is king. I mean, that's one of the buzzwords that have been going around for a long time. And if you're not creating content, you're really missing out on a major ad space or a major opportunity to market your company. And uh, I'll explain more. But first, you know, what's the point of blogging? You know, there's actually no motivation unless you guys can see some sort of outcome. So I want to go over a few reasons why you should be blogging and why it's beneficial to your company and why you should continue to do so. The first thing that blogging creates automatically are landing pages. Uh, a landing page is a, a piece of content out there. You could call it a blog, an article, a product service page, a uh, product, uh, but these landing pages uh, are specific pages that go, uh, are focused on one type of content. Then these landing pages are so important today because Google now is directing all of our customers and potential clients to our landing pages. I'm looking at the data and the landing pages and are getting more traffic than the home page. Quite often the home page is never even seen in the experience that your customer has with your website. The reason why is because Google would rather the client go directly to the specific information they're looking for versus going to your homepage and then trying to sort through it all. So imagine you type in Sears dishwasher. Well, instead of going to the Sears homepage and trying to figure out where the dishwashers are, Google automatically pulls up 20 or 30 of the best dishwashers on the Sears website for you to look at, followed by the Sears homepage, maybe on page three or four of the Google rankings. This is a great uh, advancement in user experience that we should take advantage of. And again, I think it leads to higher conversions. Speaking of, when you're doing these blogs, you're actually creating a much better customer experience, a much better experience for the person who's gonna be viewing your website. Again, they're gonna be getting, going to these niched pages, they're gonna be finding the specific information that they're looking for, and it's really important to remember to make sure that there's a strong call to action, a phone number, and a contact form on each one of these pages. Because remember, people might not be going to your contact page. They might not be going to your home page. Don't make people click around to get in contact with you. Make sure you have all of that information front and center on every single page of your website. The fewer clicks to a conversion, the better. That's what they say. A third reason, branding. Keeping relevant information in front of your audience and network is crucial. And listen, I know a lot of us have already picked our favorites. Uh, for example, Coke and Pepsi. If people drink soda, people used to drink soda, everybody had a, a, a preference, a Coke or Pepsi. I liked Coke. I didn't like Pepsi. If you ask me what would I rather have, I'd rather have a Coke than a Pepsi. But you see how definitive that decision is? So let me ask you this question. Why in 2016 did Coca-Cola spend $4 billion on advertising? If everybody already likes Coke or already likes Pepsi, why do they spend $4 billion? It wasn't to convert Pepsi users, I promise, but it was to remind us Coke users that we were thirsty, that we might want to have a soda, that we might want, you know, it actually is deeper than that. You know, a lot of times when we see those advertisements, our mouth actually waters. You know, so this type of reminder remarketing is crucial. Another reason to be blogging, creating content, it really, really adds up. And what I mean by that is that you get a lot of residual website traffic. That's right. Every month, people will be searching, and every single month, your blogs and your articles will be coming up in search. Typically, when you write a nice blog or article, you can count on 15 to 30 people visiting that page every month, month over month. So if you have one article and it's getting 20 people a month, you do another article next month, now you're getting 40 people a month. Another article the following month, now you're getting 60 people a month. This is how you build your website's traffic month over month with residual 
blog traffic. And remember guys, for every 100 people that go to your website, something's going to happen, right? You know, you're going to get a phone call. You're going to get a, somebody's going to fill out a form. This is how we build our uh, organic traffic over time. And this is really important just as kind of a side note. There's only two ways to get people to your website. You can either build this traffic through blogging and building content, or you can buy it through ads like pay-per-click and Facebook boosts. But guess what? That buying it is not getting any cheaper. These price per clicks and these ads are not getting any cheaper. So content is going to be a way that you can always stay in the game and offset the price of the ever increasing paid traffic. Another great reason to create content, create blogs is that these serve as excellent uh, pieces of content for you to push over your email marketing and your social media channels. These are the types of things that people want to read. Uh, getting these out on social media and getting these out on email will automatically fill in your what should I post on social media question. You know, so uh, again, having these and using them for more than one reason is essential. Like I was telling you guys earlier, email marketing is still number one after 20 years and people are still not using it. Uh, you should expect about a 20 to 25% open rate with a one to 3% click through rate. And I would send an email once or twice a month. The statistics show that people want to hear from their favorite brands at least once a month. So we've gone over a few reasons why we should be creating content and they're really great reasons. Uh, it's not that we wouldn't be doing it for not. Uh, we're not creating uh, webisodes and episodes and blogs just to say that we're doing it. There's an actual strategy, there's a plan and there's a payoff. And that's what's so key. So now that we've talked about why you should be doing it, maybe we should talk about what you should be doing or, or how you should be creating this fantastic content. And you know, it's more like now what? You know, writer's block, anyone? How many times have we sat down and we've tried to figure out, you know, what are we gonna write? What's the blogs gonna be? What are the titles? It's tough. It really is tough. So I wanna give you a few tips and tricks uh, that'll make it extremely easy for you guys to come up with some content, fill in the blanks, and really help out not only your sales funnel, but your circle of influence. As you guys know, putting out ads and coupons is now like wallpaper. You know, we're, di we're, we're diluted by those type of advertisements. Um, the buy now, save now is really, I'm not saying it's gone, but you can tell by how many publications come in the postal service nowadays, how coupon advertising is really working out. It's kind of going away in so many senses. Uh, so going online is going to be crucial and providing information that's going to be helpful is going to be way more important than discounting your services. Everybody that signs up with Hawk marketing services, the first thing we look at is their pricing. We never encourage coupons. We never encourage discounts. We always encourage high quality. We always encourage customer service and we always encourage a higher price point. Uh, there's no reason to, uh, you know, give away the farm if you can provide excellent high quality content and be a resource for your community. Now and today more than ever, uh, we have to make connections with our clients and connections with our communities in order to move the needle of emotion for them to make a reaction. We need to take a few minutes and walk a mile in our client's shoes. A lot of us already know what some of the problems are. A lot of us already know the problems that our clients are facing and we should address them preemptively, right? What are the professional or personal hardships? How can we help them? How can we educate them? How can we gain their trust? What are they wondering about? These are the type of questions that we should ask ourselves about our own clients, and then we'll set up content to preemptively address those uh, questions and concerns that they have. One way that you could come up with ideas might be to create a mind map. Again, a mind map is when you put a central piece of information in the middle, and then you draw lines out with different brainstorming ideas, and that might be a great way to come up with some content and come up with some uh, blog titles. Remember, 
try to write down four or five things that you know your customers are struggling with. So here's a couple ideas that I've come up with with a few different industries. Blog titles, educational ideas, <clears throat> and they are as follows. Now for real estate agents, here's a few ideas. How to stage your home for sale, 10 steps for prepping your home for market, buying a home one-on-one, -on -one, how to sell your home without an agent, this year's market prediction. How to sell your home without an agent. Every time I tell a real estate agent that, they look at me with cross eyes. For a photographer, step up your cell phone photography. Where not to have your photos printed. Three steps to taking a great family photo. Taking a great family photo, I thought the photographer was supposed to do that. Family photo, home decor tips. Safe keeping your family memories. For trainers and coaches, five ways to ask for promotion. How to advance in today's job market. 10 habits for successful business people. How to avoid a mid-career crisis. I mean, what's the game plan here? You guys told me, you guys heard me say, uh, you know, photographer teach a family how to take better portraits of their family. Uh, for a real estate agent, how to sell your home without a real estate agent. You know, every time I mention that, again, I get, I get funny looks, but what are we really doing here? You know, when we're writing these articles, we're doing a few things. The first thing we're doing is we're being an expert in our industry. We're pulling out all the stops and letting everybody know exactly what we know and exactly how we're gonna go about and do this thing. Remember, there's not a lot of secret sauce in many industries. Uh, I, in my book, I talk about everything is kind of built from Legos. You know, so under the hood, there's only a few things to know. So it's worth it to share everything you know. There really is no trade or industry secrets. And what I really like about giving it away is that you really do get a lot of respect back. Uh, they respect the steps that you have to take. They respect all of the process you have to go through. They can see with their own eyes how much time this is going to take. They can now understand why you charge what you charge and why it's valuable. You know, walking people through your process and sharing this information with them really only leads to what Kat was alluding to, what I love to call next step questions, right? You've opened the can of worms, you've let them look inside, now they wanna really know how this thing works, right? So they start asking those next step questions and there you are with your, uh, your, your baseball mitt ready to make an easy fly ball catch, right? You know, you've set yourself up for an opportunity to have a wonderful follow-up, for an opportunity to have an hour one-on-one. -on -one. And you've really, um, you've really been calculative, calculating this, this anticipation of, yeah, I've kind of let them in now here. Now what's the next few things they're gonna ask me? That's when your expertise comes into play. That's when you're able to charge what you want to charge for your products and services. And remember, there's nothing better than the giver's game. If you want, you give to want, right? They're gonna ask those questions that usually comes up when somebody advances their skills to the next level. You know, a lot of people understand the 101 and that's what we're suggesting that you offer them. The, the, the base level information, the easy to understand information, the easy, the consumer digestible information. These are the 101 classes, the beginner level classes. But most consumers will understand that there's more to the game than this. Then they will start asking you for those second level, those advanced and intermediate questions. That's when you're there to share your expertise and ask for the sale. Obviously, the same goes for referrals. If you can demonstrate to your circle of influence that you are an expert and that you're constantly giving knowledge and adding to the community, it obviously and clearly will enhance the amount of referrals and the quality of referrals that you get from your community. Uh, when you're creating content, we highly recommend that you use photographs. We highly recommend that you use photographs. Your photographs 
count a little bit more to Google than stock photographs. So original photographs count a little bit more than stock photographs, but better to have a stock photograph than no photograph at all. There's resources out there for free stock photography. Uh, I know Lee uses a lot of stock photography for his PowerPoint presentations and they elevate them. And we always include at least one graphic with every article that we write. Because remember, people are very visual. Lee Crumball? Well, John, but I do try to use my own photographs when I can. Most of the photography on my website is mine, for, for example. So I agree with you. You get, you, get a, you get credit in search when you do that. You absolutely do. Uh, the most popular stock photography websites are Adobe Stock, Think Stock, iStock Photo, Getty Images, and Canva. Again, all this information is on the website and Lee? Uh, Unsplash. Great resource. All, all free. No credit need to be given. There you go. Now, guys, nobody likes writing a book report. I'm not suggesting that you write a book report. I'm suggesting that you make it quick and snappy. You know, a lot of people are on the move, they're on the go, they need quick reads and their breaks. They do not want to uh, sit there and read the encyclopedia while they're going about their day. So we're recommending that these articles be easy to read, short to the point with lots of information. Google recommends that you write at about a fifth to sixth grade reading level. Now, I know a lot of us in Annapolis in this area, we're great at reading, but there's a whole country out there that uses Google, and there's a whole bunch of other countries out there that use Google, and the reading levels out there aren't uh, as high in every region. So Google recommends that we write at about a fifth or sixth grade level. And remember, uh, when we're writing about our very complicated industries, we need to you know, get it down to the consumer level. Uh, I remember our, a, a potential client asked me, Listen, I've been in the water treatment business for 30 years. How are you going to write articles about water treatment um, in, you know, machines? And you don't know anything about it. I said, well, listen, I, I don't need to know 100% of the details. What I need to do is write it in a way that your consumer understands it. And a lot of these technical industry buzzwords are not included in that type of writing. You know, so you really have to spell it out, make it easy to understand. Even medical information online, which is looked at extra hard and scrutinized extra by Google, even medical quality information is recommended to be written at a, a high school senior reading level. No higher than a high school senior reading level. So remember when you're writing, easy to understand, quick, short, with chock full of information. We're recommending three to five paragraphs with three to five sentences each, right? Three to five paragraphs with three to five sentences each. Hey, the beginning paragraph and the end paragraph are already taken care of. That's the opening and the closing. You know, so we're not really uh, recommending, uh, you know, that you, you go all out if you actually have something long-winded or something that uh, needs to be described with a lot of information, then we recommend breaking it up into a series of blogs that way, you know, you get more opportunities to, again, shoot out more social media and shoot out more email marketing campaigns. That being said, as an SEO expert, I will share with you that the highest ranking articles on the internet have 1,700 words or more. What I've been recommending is three to 500 words. Remember, we're in Annapolis, Maryland, not New York, New York, right? So we don't have to be the best in the country, we have to be the best in Annapolis, Maryland, the best in Anne Arundel County, the best in our region. Don't reinvent the wheel. There's no reason to reinvent the wheel. We're here in Maryland. There's professionals that do the same exact thing that we do in other states and other regions in the country. Simply look up the topics that you wanna write about and look at competitors, not even competitors, look at peers that are in other regions. See what their top ranking content looks like. See how long it is. See what's included. See how many photo photographs there are. 
there is a long running strategy of SEO experts simply Googling articles and writing better articles to outrank those articles that they found. You know, do not reinvent the wheel. Go out there, see what's out there, come back, make it your own, and, and put it out on your website. Google is already letting us know what they want or what they think is the top and the best content. There's no reason why we should go out there and try to reinvent the wheel. Use these other examples from our peers in other regions. Remember, sprinkle in a touch of local when you're writing. Sprinkle in a touch of local. As you know, Google loves local and they try their hardest to serve up local results over regional results. But it wouldn't hurt if you added, you know, maybe a city name or maybe your region in your article. A lot of times when I talk about local marketing, I talk about local marketing in Maryland, right? So you'll see even on my website, it'll say local mar Maryland Local Marketing Agency. I'm just trying to help Google out, just trying to help Google know that, hey, I'm here in Annapolis and these geo location blogs have proven time after time to be successful. A lot of our clients, we would write articles for the project that they did, the problem that they had, and the location that they were in. A famous story is we had a pool removal company called Carroll Brothers Contracting. They would come out and they would remove pools, not install pools. So we would ask them, okay, where's the pool? What's wrong? Why are you removing the pool? And after a few weeks, what you would find is that if you typed in pool removal, Ken Island, here comes the blog, the article talking about how we removed that pool over on Ken Island. If you typed in pool removal Crownsville, there was that blog that came up first before the homepage. Remember these blogs would come up. So sprinkling in a little bit of local keywords into your articles are going to help Google uh, serve you up before regional results. So you've written your article and you've posted on your website. Now what? It's going to take a couple of weeks for Google to scan it. Usually Google scans your website once a month, twice a month. And if you're very active uh, by updating your website, Google actually scan it a few times a month. That's the goal. Imagine how many times Google, for example, has to scan Amazon and eBay. It's probably endless. But for a lot of our small fry, uh, Google comes by about once a month. So what are we going to do in the meantime? You know, Google hasn't indexed our content. We're not coming up in search yet. It might take a couple weeks. What I recommend you do is you spread the message on social media. Copy and paste the link from your article into your social media post. And immediately the image that you included will come up and start sharing it. I share the articles and videos that we produce to 20 to 25 business groups on Facebook. There's networking groups, there's business groups, there's, and that's just in our direct region. Uh, nothing further than the beltways. So there's 25 opportunities out there and maybe I'll put out the list. Maybe I won't, <laughs> but I did handwrite them all and uh, make sure that you share it. Make sure that you find these groups and you share it. It is a free way to promote yourself. And a lot of times when people post in groups, Facebook sends them notifications. Groups is a great way. Now, if you're going to use Facebook, remember John says, use your personal profile first because Google doesn't restrict the views as much on your personal profile. If you're using your business page, Facebook really doesn't like when people put links on Facebook and get them away from Facebook. Facebook wants you on Facebook, right? To serve advertisements. So when you put a link on there, directing people away from Facebook, expect Facebook to really limit how many people see that. That's why A, we're taking advantage of groups and B, if we're using our Facebook page, we're boosting the content. What I recommend is a $50 boost over 14 days. That's what we usually do is a $50 boost over 14 days. Uh, I talked to Facebook. They said usually after two weeks, 
things, you know, kind of fizzles out. I was doing 30 days, but after talking to Facebook directly, uh, they recommended 14 days. The minimum is a dollar a day. For about a dollar, you can get one person to your website. That's very inexpensive in the world of pay, considering Google charges eight to fifty dollars. If you're a, a, a lawyer or a plumber, expect to pay thirty-five to fifty dollars for every person that clicks on your Google listing, paid Google listing, to your website. Facebook is a dollar, so you can see. Look, I'm. My phone's replying. Google, look, Google, Google, Google's listening to me, guys. Facebook is severely undercutting Google right now in order to garner those uh, advertising dollars. Right? There's only so much pie, a piece of pie out there. Google's trying to get, or Facebook's trying to get their slice. So they're dramatically undercutting. Now, I don't expect these prices to last forever, but a dollar a person is pretty inexpensive. And if you think about it. 100 people go to your website, typically one to 3% are gonna do something. Call you, fill out a form, book a meeting with you. So it just kind of gives you a little bit of a, how much might this cost me to get a phone call? The second thing that I recommend that you do is I, I recommend that you send an email. Send an email to every person you've collected contact information from. Remember this content that you're creating is super helpful. So it shouldn't be, uh, an issue for them to want to read the information that you're providing. Remember, 25% of your competitors are still not using email, but when polled, over 90% of respondents wanted to get at least one email from the people and brands that they like and trust. So at the bare minimum, could you at least send one email a month? Please, I, pray, I beg you. So, I hope that I've given you a bunch of reasons why you should be blogging and I hope I've given you a few tips on you know, what to do and how to get it done easily. If you want more information, I have a complete workshop on our website, hawkmarketingservices.com. The whole chapter is here on my website and I'm scrolling down right now to uh, the workshop part just to show it to you. Creating useful content, we have an area where you'll brainstorm and write down five problems and complaints that you know your prospects are having. There's an area where you can uh, build a clever title. It gives you tips and tricks on how to find and create engaging titles. Remember that title is important because we don't want people spending all their time in their inbox. We want them away from their inbox and on our website. And in order to do that, we need them to at least click on our email. And the title is crucial. Here is some title templates for everybody to utilize. Uh, and remember quick and snappy. Here is a suggestion on how to uh, fill out the body. Remember, we're only asking for three to five paragraphs. The first and the last is the intro and the closing. Don't forget to include a call to action at the end, right? If you can't bring yourself to write, hire John Maggio and Kat Harvey. We're experts on content and we're experts on content distribution. Uh, guys, thank you all very much for your time today. Looks like we're running about 9.07. I'll drop this link in the chat. And I really appreciate you guys letting me share some of our information today on how we really help our clients shine on Google, get more leads, and stave off the ever-increasing pay-per-lead costs. Thank you all very much.